but stop making excuses, stop whining, stop, right? Get at it. No excuses, just dominate. What is up guys, Dr. Andre Pineset here, and today we're gonna to talk about habits. And <laughs> the origin of this talk today actually comes from my interaction with a recent enrollee in one of my courses. Um, and the student sent me a message after he got in. He's like, oh man, Dr. Pine said, I'm so excited to get this course. I said one question, how long is it gonna take for me to get straight A's? And <laughs> I laugh at this because it's a question I get a lot of times from students. And I replied back to him and I said, well, listen, well, how long, what kind of grades do you get? And the student said, oh, I get, you know, uh, a lot of B's, but some C's mixed in there. And I said, okay, so you're an average student. How long have you been an average student? And the student replied back to me and said, uh, well, basically my whole life. And I said, there you go. So you've been an average student for your entire life. So what we have to do to make you a consistent straight A student is we have to reverse a lifetime of bad habits. And if there's anything you guys need to understand about habits is that habits are hard to establish and even harder to break. So it takes time, right? All the bad habits you guys can think about in your lives that you accumulated, we talk about like, even just think about smoking, how hard is people to quit smoking? Well, some of you guys have habits that are even harder to break because they're even more rewarding than what cigarette smoking is, right? So today what I wanna to talk to you guys about is four things you guys can do to break those bad habits. You guys ready? You guys ready to break your habits so you, can, you guys can be more successful students? If you're ready for that, like the video right now. Let me know you guys are ready. So let's get it going. Here we go. So we're going to break. Habits is the goal. And I profess that I am a bad writer, so don't blame me for the penmanship you see on this board here. But we're trying to break some habits. How do we do that? Well, the first thing you have to do is that you have to take baby steps. Who knows what I'm talking about? The number one mistake I see students make when they want to become, they want to go from the, whatever student they are, they want to become a more successful student, is that they try to change a thousand things all at once. They're doing this strategy and that strategy and this strategy, and I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna do any more partying, and I'm, and I'm not gonna waste any more time, I'm gonna study all day, and it's this radical change. And you guys know how hard that is, right? How many of you guys have been there where you try to, I'm gonna change my whole life, today's the day, right? And <laughs> it doesn't happen. And the reason it doesn't happen is because you feel overwhelmed. It seems insurmountable to change that habit. And so what I wanna encourage you guys to do is to take baby steps. Start with just one habit that you wanna change. One thing that you think is stopping you from being successful. And what this is called in the world of changing habits and in this world is a keystone habit. And I want you guys to write that down, a keystone habit. And what that means is when we identify something we wanna change about ourselves, we wanna be a more successful student, we recognize there's a lot of things we're doing wrong that are making us a not successful student, but we can't change them all at once, so we wanna pick one thing to start with. And a mistake that people make as an offshoot of that is instead of taking everything, they pick a habit, but they pick something that isn't going to impact their bottom line. Does that make sense? What I'm saying is, is you pick a habit that you want to change, but that habit isn't something that's going, if you did change it, you aren't going to see the effect of. And this is problematic because when we're trying to change a habit, right, it's something that's set and it's ingrained in us, we want to see that progress. We want to see that growth. And if we don't see it, we don't feel good. We don't, feel, we don't, we don't sustain that change. So you want to pick a habit where when you change that habit, you're going to see at least some small gain immediately. And with that gain, you're going to elevate up. And as I walk you guys through these four things I want you to do, I'm going to use the example from my own life because I can call this student average because I was the average student. And I was told such by my freshman counselor who told me I was an average student and I would never be exceptional. I'm never going to medical school. And I was able to turn it all around. It took me about three months to become a dominant student. And that's much faster than what many students do, but it's possible if you know what to do and you have the discipline to execute. And I had both of those things, and so I was able to do it. I learned quickly in those three months and I put the discipline in. But the example, the, the keystone habit that I had, right, with my baby steps, so what I identified was really weighing me down as a student and, and my keystone habit was that I liked hanging out. <laughs> How many of you guys like hanging out? And I wouldn't even say it was partying or anything. It was just the fact that 
when I was supposed to be working, I would look for any sort of human interaction, opportunity to sit with other people that prevented me from doing what I was supposed to do. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? You live in that, that dorm life, that college life. You got friends everywhere, stuff to do. There's always something to do. And I was literally doing stupid stuff that was, it wasn't even fun. It was just something to do like, oh, hey, let's we're gonna go walk around campus. You wanna go? Sure, let's go walk around campus. It's like, I, I, I hate walking this campus. It's on the way to class. I'm not doing this, but I would do it every single day. So for me, it was just hanging out, wanting to talk to people, wanting to just lounge around and not be doing my work. And so I identified that of all the things I was doing, hanging out was my number one keystone habit that I had to break. And so I identified one habit. And then in terms of identifying that one habit, you guys think that, oh, I'm just gonna snap my fingers and I'm gonna stop hanging out. That's not realistic. So what we want to do is understand within that one habit, we need to take baby steps. Let's just get a little bit better. Let's just get a little bit better. So when I wanted to change this habit of hanging out, I didn't cut hanging out cold turkey, right? What I did was I reallocated my hanging out and I said, okay, I'm not allowed to hang out all the time. I'm allowed to hang out now after my work is done. Right? And by doing that and saying, you know what, I can't hang out until after my work is done, it put me in a situation where I'm not cutting hanging out, out completely, but I'm making that hanging out contingent on me being successful in doing my work. And simply by changing that around and saying, listen, okay, I'm still going to hang out, but I'm not going to hang out until my work is done. What it forced me to do is do that work first, and I still was rewarding myself with the hanging out so it was easy to do. And what was amazing was when I stopped when I did my work before hanging out, I found myself getting a lot more work done. And this is why it's a great habit for me to cut in terms of getting better as a student, because then I immediately saw the difference that every day, oh my gosh, I'm getting stuff done. Like even if it's not everything I want to get done, at least I'm getting something done and it's more than what I used to get done. And it's because I chose to stop hanging out, right? And so it, it, was, it was incredible for me what this, this did in terms of propelling me forward and kind of rewarding me of like, oh, okay, if I just not stop hanging out, but if I reallocate my hanging out to after my work is done, I see gains, I see growth. And those baby steps move me along to breaking my bad habit of not studying and procrastinating when I shouldn't be, right? And not being as effective and successful as I could be. And the second thing that I want to encourage you guys, so if you guys understand that, comment below if you guys understand what I'm talking about taking baby steps. The second thing is what I tell people about a lot of things is that we want no days unalert. And when I say no days unalert, what I mean is, is if we're going to change something, if we're going to take an active role in being better, we have to be alert and aware at all times of things that are pulling us into non-functional behaviors and things that are propelling us forward towards our goals. And for me, I had to be aware, I had to be alert I had to be at attention at all times because the devil was, no, not the devil was trying to get me, but procrastination and hanging out was always trying to get me because everyone was like, oh, I got this going on, I got this going on, oh, come over, just come hang out in my room. Like, and so you get pulled in a lot of directions. And if you're just casually like, oh, you know, I wanna change this habit, and you are actively looking for obstacles, you're gonna get tripped up by them. And even more so than just being aware of potential obstacles, we must put in tools that help us avoid the obstacles entirely. And so for me, what I got in the habit of doing, right, as part of my no days on alert, was that I went I left the dorm early each day. So I would get up and I would take my work elsewhere away from the dorm. That way these obstacles, these people wanted to hang out, they couldn't get me. They could, I was out of their reach. I was gone. And so by being aware and saying, I'm going to look out for these obstacles, but then being proactive and saying, no, I'm going to take an active role in pulling myself out of this habit. It was huge. It was powerful. And it really, really helped me not have to be so, I don't know, what is it? Determined and disciplined, right? Because, and I think that's one of the big things and we'll sidetrack here is that people talk about discipline and willpower like some people have it and some people don't. But the reality is even someone like me who I think feel like I have extreme discipline, I'm lazy as all get out. I'm just like you guys, right? Like I don't want to do some of this stuff, 
But what we have to do is take an active role in putting ourselves in a situation where we don't have another choice. So if I'm not at the dorm, I don't have the option to waste time sitting in the lobby. I don't have the option to walk down the halls and see what other mischief I can get into and what people can hang out with. I've pulled myself out of the situation. And so that's what you guys have to do is you guys are looking to break these habits and, and be more successful in whatever it is. So we identify a keystone habit, do baby steps, don't get rid of it completely, just start, start working after I'm done. And as a continuation of the baby step, what I eventually started doing was I wouldn't hang out. And not only until after my work was done, but I would push the bulk of my hanging out to the weekends so I could get more extreme with it. Then I left the dorm early, right? And then I actually moved out of the dorm entirely to prevent this issue, situation. So I lived off campus in my own apartment to avoid this issue. So those are the first two things. And this is live action, guys. So I'm gonna check my notes here to make sure I'm still on track right here. If you guys are enjoying this, like this video right now. Um, but the third thing I wanna say to you guys is as you guys go to change habits, right? It's easy to get down on ourselves. So what I wanna encourage you guys to do is be punitive, not punishing. Oftentimes when we wanna change a habit, we wanna do something different. When we slip up, when we make a mistake, which is gonna happen. <laughs> so first of all, expect that to happen. Expect to make mistakes, expect not to be perfect. But then the follow up to that is that we punish ourselves. We feel guilty. Oh man, I said I was gonna study today, I didn't study today. And we're so mean to ourselves and we get so down on ourselves and we become our own worst enemy, our own critic. And so instead of being punishing and being a, a critic, we're gonna be critical and we're gonna be punitive. So what I want you guys to do is there's a lot of different ways to do is you guys can look up different ways to break habits. But what I did that was very simple was I kept a running tally in a small little notebook, and I always call, carry, and I'll grab one for you guys, and I'll show you. I always carry these small little journals with me, and at the time, now, I can afford moleskins, right? Back in the day, it was just like, whatever little uh, five-star meat or whatever I could find, I'd find little notebooks, and I would carry actually them, or you can carry a note card even, it's that simple. But you carry it, and you have this note card. I'll draw a note card for you. And what you do is, I would did wins and losses, because that's easy for me. But whatever you feel like doing. But so you document those things, and so when you are successful, oh yeah, you know what, today, you know what, I got my work done before I hung out. Oh, you know what, today I didn't. Right, and we take these tallies. We take these tallies through the week. And maybe there's a lot of losses early on. But what you can see, what's cool about this, there's two things. One, is that it creates a process for you to actively look for when you're making the right decision, making the wrong decision, and then as you do it, you're documenting it, and you can think about it. And as you document it, I encourage you guys, right, we wanna be punitive, so penalize yourself. So if you go and you start hanging out before you're supposed to, as I was doing, what I would tell myself is, you know what, I'm not allowed to hang out the rest of the day. I slipped up, I did that, okay, but now I'm gonna get back on track, and as a, as a penalty, even though there's this great party going on tonight, I'm not allowed to go. And that sucked, that really hurt, but it made me realize the importance of staying on track. I, I held myself accountable. At the same time, I said, you know what, it's all right. I'm not going to the party tonight, but I'm still gonna get work done, and I got back to work. So I wasn't punishing myself, I wasn't making myself feel guilty, but I was being active, writing it down, my wins and losses, and then every time it happened, I associated a punitive penalty with it. But I didn't punish myself with the guilt, with the negative feelings, I would get back on track. So what I did here was I documented, and I had appropriate penalties, right? So I document and I have appropriate penalties to get this going. So for you guys, you should have a way to document this habit, to track this habit. And there's actually lots now, it's 2000, you know, <laughs> it's 2019, there's lots of things that help you. There's all these planners and different tools to help you track your habits. There's apps on your phone, there's, there's live paper, but you may not even have to do like I did old school with a note card, but there's plenty of things you guys can do to make that happen. So we wanna document, be appropriate, have these penalties. And the fourth thing, and this is actually, I think, so, so central and crucial to being successful. I want you guys to recruit help. Recruit help. Changing a habit is hard, particularly because when you've been in a lifestyle, right, all your habits make your life. So when you've been in a certain lifestyle, you have to recognize the people that are gravitating towards you are people who like that lifestyle. You guys know what I'm saying right now, right? The things that you do, the people that are around you the most also like to do those things. 
So what you have to do is be cautious and be careful and make sure those people around you are there to help you and not to hurt you. So we want to recruit those people to actively be helping us be better, to reach our goals, to push us forward. Not pull us down. So you tell everyone around you, this is my goal. This is what I'm trying to achieve. I'm trying to get to medical school. I'm trying to become a dentist. I'm trying to become an engineer. And I've been failing myself because I hang out too much. So please, guys, here's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to only hang out after I get my work done. If you guys see me hanging out before my work is done, please tell me I'm doing it wrong. If you guys want to hang out with me, but you know my work is not done, please don't distract me. Please don't pull me away from that. And as part of this, guys, when you recruit this help again, right? We want to facilitate, just like here, how I was leaving the dorm early. That's facilitating myself, but you want to facilitate those around you. So set up, for example, in this case, I set up study hours. So people knew between these certain hours, I was always studying. And therefore, they started to realize whenever they would contact me during that time, I would say I couldn't hang out, and they stopped contacting me during that time. So I'm facilitating their helping me. So facilitate. Every time I hear that word, I think it's Gary Owens. There's a big, big joke he tells about facilitating. But anyway, facilitate their help. Put them in positions. Let them know specifically how they can help you. Hey, guys, I'm studying between these hours and these hours. Please don't bother me. Hey, guys, if you see them off track, tell me to get on my thing. Right? If you have certain homework assignments, so say your keystone habit is, you know what, I don't do the homework. Have your people know what your homework assignment schedule is. Oh, you know what, your math problem set is always due on Fridays. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that Wednesday I'm asking you, and then Thursday I'm on you and I wanna see it. So you're, they're helping to hold yourself accountable and to follow through with this, right, where we're, we're taking the baby steps, we're being aware, and then we're being punitive, not punishing, but we're going to have some negative things that happen. And then we're going to recruit help to also help us be more aware, be more alert, and to facilitate us moving in a positive direction. And this may sound very simple, guys, but I'm telling you, I literally turned myself around from an average to a dominant student, and I started with just one habit, hanging out, baby step. I didn't stop hanging out completely. I just said, you know what, I'm only allowed to hang out after my work is done. And then what I found, right, and then I left the dorm early to set myself up for success, and I would come back with all this work done, feeling great, feeling that reward. That's why it's a keystone habit, right? Because I'm getting that reward immediately. I'm getting stuff done. And then I'm noticing this stuff I'm getting done and, and not getting done because I'm documenting it all. So I can see clearly, oh, you know, in the beginning, when I first started this, I was doing a lot of mistakes. But then I'm making less mistakes. And I'm documenting my improvement so I can see that growth. So it's rewarding to me. And then I have appropriate penalties where I penalize myself objectively, right? But I don't subjectively get inside my own head and tell myself I'm a terrible person. I can't change. I can't be better. I'm not going to be successful. It's all just, hey, I can't hang out tonight. I forego that tonight. And then we're going to put those around us in a position to support our growth and not take away from it. And by doing that, guys, I literally turn my whole life around. And I hope that you guys understand that where you're at right now, I know we all want quick tips and tricks and hacks of how we can be more successful, more productive students. But the reality is, you guys have been living a lifetime of underachieving for many of you guys. Many of you guys, right, that's your, and where that comes from is your habit set, is your behavior, is your innate self. So we must recognize that if we want to change, and that's a big thing too, as we, we'll sidetrack here a little bit, is that many of you guys, you want to change, yeah, I could change, I could not change, but you don't absolutely need to change. You don't absolutely need that change. And until you really feel that hunger and that need to change, you're not going to make that change. And that's why I always say, like that counselor who told me that I was an average student who wasn't exceptional, that was a turning point in my life for someone to tell me, to call me out on my BS, to get me out of my rationalization of, oh, you know, I'm doing okay, to tell me, no, you are a wreck. And the pain, the sting, the embarrassment, honestly, I was embarrassed that someone could say that to me and it be true. I'm average? I'm average, and this is <laughs> another sidebar, but <laughs> one of the things from my childhood, um, my parents had very high standards for me, and my mom, my dad would never, even if I was doing good, they would always find the things I could do better. And as my dad once said, he said, average is not acceptable. 
Average is not acceptable. And it's funny because he said it to me as a child. And in that moment when my counselor said, you are average, you will never be exceptional. Therefore, you will never get into medical school. What she was really saying was, it's average is not acceptable to medical schools. And so it hit me like a ton of bricks where I was like, dang, not only am I messing up for myself, but I should know better because my dad told me what I need to be doing. And so that fire, that hunger sparked this need to change. The urgency to say, no, this, I have to change. And it started with just one habit and then I reformed everything. And I went from being an average student, like I said, to being a good student, to all of a sudden looking around like, these cats can't hang with me. And so for you guys, I encourage you, recognize if you're trying to change your study habits, if you're trying to be a better student, it starts with this. And as I close this out, I want to let you guys know, I have a course. It's called How to Double Your Study Efficiency. It literally, at minimum, will double your study efficiency. I've had people say, me, change your whole life. They're straight-A students after it. And it's the first pillar of my entire five pillars of study lessons and getting a better grade system. But this first pillar is so powerful because I teach you guys about habits and I have you systematically go through all the barriers is what I call them. But what they really are, are the bad habits you're unaware of because they're stopping you. They're a roadblock for you being successful. And so I go through all the possibility of ways that you're blocking yourself from success with bad habits. And I teach you how to change that habit and how to replace it with a better, more effective habit. So that way you can develop functional, productive study habits and be more productive, be more efficient, and, and be a great stud studier and a great student. So I want you guys to check that out. You can click the box below and you can check that course out. I also have a great free guide, three simple changes for becoming a better student. And you can click on that, it's totally free below. But check out these resources, guys. I create these resources because it's not about, and this is why, right? I'm, I, I'm Dr. Andrew Pines at my website, right? It's studenttransformation.com. It's the total student transformation. It's not, if you guys wanna be radically different, Right? If you want to go to a whole nother level, what does it take to get to that level? It takes that transformation. It takes an entire change of you as a student. And that's what I do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys enjoyed this, please take a second, like this video. Please take a second and comment and tell me what you're thinking about this. Tell me what your keystone habit is. Tell me what you're gonna change today to start being more productive, to start being more successful, start being that new student you wanna be. Let me know, guys. And as always, if you guys want to reach out to me, if you want to contact me, go to my website, studenttransformation.com. Right on the right side, you can click a button. You can leave me a voicemail. And I will literally get back to your voicemail, reply to you, answer your questions. And also, you might see one of your questions on one of these videos. You don't know, right? So take the time. Go to my website, studenttransformation.com. Leave me a voicemail so I can make sure that whatever your question is, whatever your issue is, we can solve it. And like I said, this came from a student who was asking me a question. So if you guys have questions, I want to make sure you guys have the resources you need to be successful. You guys ready? So, right, so <laughs> as I, I, will, I will always say it, I will always end these videos. What is our motto, guys? No excuses, just dominate. Cut the excuses, make the change, be a different person, and then you can dominate. Everyone have a great, great day. I appreciate it so much. Dr. Andre Pinesett, guys, I am out of here thank you today is the day guys no more excuses no more complaining you're going to take your future in your own hands you're going to dominate you're going to be successful get to my website studenttransformation.com i challenge you what are you going to do today to make your life better